What's going on, everyone? Wow. So um, I didn't think I'd be making a video on the Sabbath. Um, it's Friday night. Um, it's a good night, though. I I was praying some uh, praise and worship music and uh, reading the word and just doing some time with the Father. And I just wanted to share this message because um, I know that, you know, many people have probably come across uh, this in Matthew many times. And, and a lot of people talk about, um, you know, um, judgment and things like this. But I want to I wanted to kind of go into detail a little a little bit about it, and um, a lot of people um, I feel don't really read the Word of God enough to know um, enough about how we are to righteously judge others, but not judge the world. Um, and so I'm going to share some of Matthew and First uh, Corinthians. 5, uh, 11 through 13, I believe it is. So so let's go ahead and read this, and then we'll, we'll kind of look at some things here, and then we'll have a little talk. So um, starting at uh, Matthew 7, Judge not that ye be ju uh, not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured unto or to you again. Um, and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? This is the question. Uh, this is you know, we can just stop right there and say that this is basically what happens so much in this world. You have the left and the right fighting against each other and one saying, one, you know, one side saying that you're sinning and the other side saying, no, you're sinning. And, and you know, you believe in the wrong things. And, and it's just, if we look around in this world today, you know, this is, this is happening on a wide scale. And if people, you know, would first take the moat out of their own eye, um, you know, then they would be able to see to take the board or the beam out of the other person's eye. So let's read on. Or how it, how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Okay, like we were saying, so um, we'll just keep going here. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly and cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Notice how they say brother's eye, okay? Um, the word says brother's eye. Uh, you know, it could be sister's eye too. Um, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. So... Let's go to Strong's and look at this real quick. And, you know, for a lot of you may know this already, but when you look at what moat is, we'll go to 7.3 here. Um, let's see if that's the best place to go. Actually, let's go here. Um, that's it's actually the same numbers. G2595. If you go there, it says... Um, car frost or car frost. All right, and what it means is a dry stalk or a twig, um, a straw or chaff. 
So it's literally like a little piece, you know, of, of a twig or, a, or a, something really small in your eye, right? Okay. Now, if we look at what um, a beam is, Dukos is um, a beam, which basically is a big board, right? So let's go to the root word of it. To take with the hand, to take hold of, take up, um, to take, to receive, to use of a place, receive one. So um, this is the root word of, of, of beam. But basically, it's a large, it's a larger piece of wood, basically, or, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a metaphor for, um, you know, something bigger that's in your eye. So, you know, this is very important because um, a lot of times, People, you know, they, they enter into becoming a Christian or a believer or um, whatever you want to call it. They, they come to the knowledge of reading the Word of God and they, they commit themselves to uh, being born again and all these things. And, um, and just like any program or process, you have to go all the way through the program to graduate. You know, it's not just we um we go to kindergarten and we accept um the next 12 years of school and then we say um well i finished kindergarten so i'm good now i've i've, I've participated and uh, i'm good now no we have to go through the teaching and the and the um the process of um getting the word inside us so that it can minister to us so that we can know what these things mean and um, first judge ourselves, right? We, we must first judge ourselves. And um, basically evaluate ourselves before we evaluate others, okay? And um, now this goes along with not just your brother or your sister or your family member, also with your wife or your husband or vice versa. It It's to do with all of our interactions with with people um, that are somewhat you know in the um, understanding and are in a relationship with God but if you go to um, and we'll do this right now if you go to Corinthians um, I had a bunch of stuff typed in here. Oh, sorry, made a mistake there. One moment, guys. All right, so if we look here in Corinthians, it's, um, you know, it's, it, it talks a little bit about this too, um, too but in, 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 um, in a different way. So um, let's just read here. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or a uh, covet covetous, or an idolater, or a, a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, um, with such, and one do not, uh, one know not to eat. Um, for what have I to do to judge them also, that are without 
do not judge, do not ye judge them that are within? Um, yes. And, but them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourselves the wicked person. So, yes, when people say, you, you know, we're not supposed to judge people, yes, we're not supposed to judge the world. But as it says here, we are to, um, you know, rightfully evaluate those people around us and our brothers that we call brothers and sisters to rightfully judge them, maybe not in word, but in their actions and things that they do by the way they live their life. So that we can make a decision whether we should, um, you know, depart from them, and of course, what we what we are here to do is to is to minister to them and say, hey, brother, look, um, you know, you have a drinking problem, and um, I'm not trying to judge you, but you know, hey, man, I'm here to help you with that. If, if there's anything I can do, you know, um, and just you know sharing the word of God and preaching to the person and trying to, um, you know, show them the right uh, path. But I think what a lot of people get, you know, um, confused about in this is that whenever you rightfully try to help somebody because you love them, because you, you want to see them do good, people will sometimes get offended. Because the, the flesh, the flesh of all people, you know, no one likes to be told that they've, they're doing something wrong or, or these kind of things. And it's not that, you know, um, we are judging. It's just that under the, under the, um, the lens of the judgment of the Father in, in heaven, we want to be able to... Um, help people understand that um you know there is a cure for these things there is a way to get out of these things you know like this and 511 here it says um you know the fornicator the cov covetous you know covet like in the ten commandments co uh, do, uh thou shalt not covet this is you know idolatry it's all right here like this is representative of a lot of the sins in the you know we are not to do from the um the ten commandments so when you look at this one for instance for covetous okay strong's g 4123 play a neck taste play a neck taste all right so if we look at this word it says, one eager to have more, especially what belongs to others, greedy of gain, of covetous, you know. So I'm sure that this describes a lot of people nowadays because, you know, your neighbor may have an older truck that's beat down and broken and, and, um, you drive this brand new truck that you just got, but you worked hard for, and you're not idolizing it, but you use it for work, and you're just, you're a humble guy, but um, the man across the street that has the old beat down truck sees you driving by every day and just really wants that truck that you have or wants one like it. And um, this is not right, man. This is a sin. This is what a lot of people do. It's keeping up with the Joneses and and, um, you know, being covetous, wanting what the neighbor has, or even wanting the neighbor's wife even. Um, so, you know, there's so many things that when you think about taking the plank or taking the, um, the moat or the plank out of your eye, uh, it entails a lot of things because all of us sin. All of us are, um, you know, 
flawed and a lot of us are trying to become holy and clean and purified by evaluating ourselves. And this is why we are in this position, I feel, in this world today is because from the moment we are born into this world, we are born into sin. And it takes sometimes a lifetime before, you know, up, sometimes it takes up to 30, 40 years before a person really starts to understand the word of God or or get saved or um, these kind of things. So, you know, once we once we become new in our faith and we um, have been converted, it is so very, very crucial not to just stop at that point. It's very cru it's very important to to know that that is like the time when we are really supposed to be evaluating ourselves and becoming holy, you know. Um, just like anything, there's a process, right? You know, there's first, second, and third um, with everything. And one of the older gentlemen that I was, I used to once um, talk to a lot, and I still kind of do, um, he told me, he said, um, if I can remember exactly what he said, but he said, you know, basically when it's first coming to the knowledge that what you know, Yeshua did for us on the cross and picking up your cross and following him. But the second is becoming holy and trying to, um, you know, walk away from all the sin of your life and being good to others and not, you know, accusing or being um, the same ways that you used to be before. And the third is like basically unto, you know, once you've done those first two steps, the third is to minister and teach others the, the gospel and to um, uh, share the word of God and, and hopefully water and plant seeds. So, yeah, guys, I just know I'm kind of doing this real quick here and I'm just kind of jumping around with this message, but. I hope um, this kind of helps someone out there. And it's not so much about looking at what's wrong with the world or what's wrong with other people. It's really about looking at what's wrong within ourselves. The kingdom is a, the kingdom of heaven is within us, right? So we really have to work on ourselves more than we're working on everyone else. And I think a lot of people sometimes forget about that and they 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 tend to get stuck on trying to correct everyone else. And um, it just turns into something where you get so used to trying to correct everyone else that you forget about um, the journey that you first started, you know, the journey that you started to, to cleanse yourself. So with that, guys, I just, I hope that kind of um, helps someone because that's what I try to think about more and more as time goes on. You know, I, I sometimes have to step back and, and think, you know, um, am I removing the plank out of my eye? Am I removing, you know, the flaw that is in my eye before I go and tell someone else about their flaws? So anyways, guys, I hope you have a great Sabbath. I hope you're um, blessed in this time. Be joyful, be happy, um, be Bereans and study and um, be watchful of what is coming, guys. There is, you know, famines. There is um, many, many things coming. But 
this is the more reason why we need to prepare our minds and our hearts um, for whatever is coming to be ready and to stand strong and gird yourself and shield yourself up with the full armor of God. So with that being said, you all, um, I, I hope you have a great night. And uh, I pray that Yahusha HaMashiach uh, blesses you all. All right. Aloha.